What's up, Climate One? How's everyone doing? Are we awake? How's everyone doing? Good, awesome. Um, happy Earth Weekend and day. And yeah, um, thank you so much for having me today and having my sister Issa earlier today as well. Um, she was someone that I was in Paris with for COP21. And that was a, a life-changing experience to say the least, especially as women who come from island nations that are gravely impacted by climate change right now, right? Um, this past Monday, I had the opportunity to not only attend the Goldman Environmental Prize ceremony that happened here in the city, but I also got to perform in it with two other poets. We had to, we got the opportunity to write a poem in tribute um, and in honor of a Goldman Prize winner who was assassinated last month in Honduras. Berta Cáceres was an environmental activist who walked the walk and talked the talk and lived the life. Um, of what it means to be an indigenous person listening to the land and listening to the water and listening to earth um, and getting her directions from, from, from the soil, right, and from the water. And so it was an honor to be in that room with her spirit and share that poem with, with the Goldman community. What it taught me and what climate change work continuously teaches me is that the land doesn't belong to us, that we belong to the land, and that this work isn't for us to be in, in control of. It's for us to be in relationship with each other, to learn how to move forward um, for justice, for peace. And that means across the board. It means that climate change work is racial justice work, is um, gender violence work, is you know dismantling patriarchy. It's all of those systems at play. And this poem I wanna share with you has a lot to do with my relationship with climate change and how I don't really have the language all the time, but I do know some things. Here we go. I don't know much about how to talk about climate change, but I do know a thing or two about water. I know that San Francisco, city of my birth, is running out of it as in the state of California is losing its memory of what lakes look like because not enough rain has fallen to replenish them. I know that my island of Samoa is thriving off of the very thing that plants to kill it once the sea levels are too high to distinguish the difference between swimming and drowning. I know that the tsunami spared my grandpa and his home back in September of 2009, but took 200 others how no one in my family ever dared to call this a blessing. I don't know much about how to talk about the impacts of fossil fuels or carbon footprints, but I know a lot about poverty and the paradoxes of being poor. How saving the environment rarely means saving those who come from environments like mine, where black and brown bodies are riddled with despair, too worried about going broke, to even worry about going green, losing their will to fight the foreclosure signs sprouting on their blocks like redwoods, worried about how to make a dollar stretch with dignity, to even worried about saving anything but themselves, and I can't blame them. According to a recent poll, most Americans know that the climate is changing, but they say that they're just not that worried about it. They say that it's too distant for them to care about it right now too abstract, too big, too rich to care about it affecting them, too poor to prioritize caring about how it affects them. Climate change is not always something that I feel confident talking about, but I know what it is like to watch mother nature, watch other mothers grieving in the streets as their child's black body decomposes on hot gravel at the feet of police brutality in the face of an iPhone camera, watch the rest of the world watch our extinction go viral, the other version of an inconvenient truth. Call this a debate if you want. Call this a left-wing liberal protest cry all you want, but this is what I know about climate change. I know the academics who take my community's pain and turn it into a grant proposal without our permission. The reporters who take my people's grief and use it as a fear tactic. I know how to trace the puppet strings back to the corporations who hold the world's wealth for hostage in their back pockets while the rest of us spend our lives paying for the gun. I know what it is like to come from the most powerful country on the planet, forever pregnant off of its own power. 
There are those who want to talk about climate change, yet don't want to talk about how those who, who are affected the most can't prioritize it in the first place. Because prioritizing it would mean being forced to pull the layers back and also talk about the poverty, the racism, the injustice, the privilege, the hush money, the hit list that climate change is operating from, the rounds it makes on Earth, starting with the most vulnerable. Addressing climate change means admitting that it starts and ends with us, but for some reason, none of us can seem to figure out where we put the mirror. Everyone is affected by climate change, yet some are affected first, yet no one cares until it is affecting them. This is for those of us who may not have the language, but who still have a voice. For those of us who are ready to act, even if it means doing it for someone you'll never know, in a place on the other side of the world you didn't even know existed. There are those of us who are talking about climate change, and then there are those of us who are fighting it. This is for those of us who have always had to figure out a way to do both. Thank you. Thank you.